On this video, we are going to explore the very serious topic of grief and autism. Plus, I've got key strategies to help you navigate grief as an autistic person. So let's go. Hey, and welcome, my friend. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I'm Orion Kelly, that autistic guy. I'm all about helping you raise your level of understanding, acceptance, and appreciation of the autistic community. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, I'd be delighted if you consider joining this most amazing YouTube community. And I've got a dedicated video podcast channel as well, Orion Kelly Podcasts. Let's talk about grief and autism. And just a quick note, I'm not a doctor or a healthcare professional. This video is not designed for treatment, or assessment or diagnosis. I'm just an autistic guy sharing my own personal experiences, insights and thoughts on the topic. So what is grief? Well, in basic terms, grief is a complex emotional response to loss. And it's typically associated around the loss of a loved one. However, grief can be triggered by other forms of loss. Things like the end of a relationship, a change in your living circumstances or arrangements, or the loss of a job. Grief can involve a range of emotions, thoughts, and physical sensations, and is typically experienced in stages. I'm sure you've heard people talk about the stages of grief. Now, as an autistic person, the way you experience grief may be very unique, may be very different to how a neurotypical person, a non-autistic person may experience grief. Why? Well, as we know, the neurotypical brain is different to the autistic brain. It would be impossible for a neurotypical brain and an autistic brain to process and experience things the same. For example, the way autistic people may have challenges with certain sensory stimuli or interactions and communications may impact or may influence the way we experience grief. It's also really important to understand that grief, just like autism, is not a linear process. Autism is not a linear spectrum, like a straight line of light and high and blah, blah, blah. No, <laughs> I think I just became Drac. Blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm saying though. And grief, no different. Grief is not a linear process from start to finish. I mean, really, there's no set timeline for how long grief should last. And in my experience, it's not uncommon for autistic people to experience grief in waves, waves that come and go with timing that's completely unpredictable. And the experience of those waves can be more intense or less intense, it's completely unpredictable. So let's go through some practical everyday examples of how an autistic person may experience grief differently. As autistic people, we can definitely have struggles expressing our emotions. And it's those genuine struggles that can make it a real challenge to communicate, convey our feelings of grief to others. This then leads to feelings of isolation and disconnection, which can exacerbate the grief process. It's also really important to understand that grief can manifest in different ways for autistic people. Some autistic people may have a hard time conveying their feelings no matter what, and may instead express their grief through behaviors or actions. This can result in meltdowns, shutdowns, or even burnout as a result of the grief. In other words, if you have an autistic person in your life and you aren't autistic, you might think it's a much lower level, a much less sophisticated version of expressing grief. Well, instead of telling me how they feel or being grieving people things <laughs> like everyone else, they're getting angry or they're having outbursts or their behaviors and their actions. And no, that's as valid. That is an autistic person's way of expressing and conveying they are grieving too. Don't judge. Another example is around an autistic person's sensory sensitivities. So autistic people with a heightened sensitivity to certain stimuli may find that sights, smells, and sounds associated with grief can be overwhelming. Huh? Okay, here's a basic example. Let's say my grandmother died in Australia, my nan. 
And every day, my nan put on a special type of moisturizing cream that was scented. And every time I spent time with my nan, she always smelt the same, just like that scented moisturizer cream. Then we lost my nan. I'm grieving. I happened to find the lid to the moisturizer cream she put on every morning. Not the container, just the lid. Just I found it in a random place in the house. And I smelt the lid and I could smell the cream that I associated with her wearing every day. This is a true story. That lid, honestly, is now one of the most important items I will ever have in my life. I automatically associate the smell of that lid to my nan who's now gone and therefore I associate that with grief. Now some people might not even have smelt it, right? So autistic people can associate sounds, smells, sights with grief. And this kind of heightened sensitivity to certain stimuli that you now associate with grief can actually make it really challenging to process the emotions of that grief and can therefore lead to a heightened sense of distress. The next example of how autistic people may experience grief differently is around executive function. We know this, autistic people can be challenged, can struggle with executive function. Because remember, executive function is a set of cognitive skills and autism is a neurodevelopmental condition. So we're talking about challenges in things like planning and organization. This can obviously affect how we cope with the tasks that come up as a result of grief. It could be anything, planning funerals. Another challenge that autistic people may face while navigating grief is social isolation. So whereas a neurotypical person or non-autistic person may really lean into and embrace the social component of grief, as in being with friends, family, others. Think about it in reverse. Our difficulties as autistic people with social interactions, social communication, making, forging, maintaining friendships and connections can make it really difficult to connect with others during periods of grief and find that same support that non-autistic people use and rely on during the grief process. An autistic person's struggle to understand abstract concepts also provides another example of how autistic people can experience grief differently. So abstract concepts related to grief that may be givens to neurotypical non-autistic people, like the permanence of death. Death is final. Where have they gone? They've died. Where are they coming back? Never. The concept of loss can be viewed as an abstract concept. Again, it might not seem like that to you, but as an autistic person, they're, there is something deeply, profoundly, well, almost like a whirlpool of riddles and mysteries <laughs> of death and loss that I still haven't fully got my head around. So you can imagine for autistic people going through a grief process, these abstract concepts will be really tricky. Our autistic brain, clearly different to a non-autistic brain, our stronger logical brain that relies on more concrete, black and white logical concepts and ways of thinking can really make it hard to navigate and process and understand the grief process. Bottom line is autistic people may and probably will have very unique ways of experiencing and processing grief. And those unique ways may not fit or even be accepted by neurotypical people based on neurotypical norms and expectations of how you are supposed to process and experience grief. I mean, there's steps to grief. Don't give me, I don't need your steps or your rules. I'm just gonna go ahead and do it my way. In other words, an autistic person may experience and process grief through stimming, through repetitive behaviors, echolalia, palolalia, so repeating your own words or your own sounds or repeating the words and sounds of others. We may just withdraw altogether. Regardless of what it is we do as autistic people, that's different to neurotypical people to process and experience grief is often misunderstood. But worse than that is judged and worse than that is forbidden. Will you stop doing that? Bottom line, it's really important to respect and support the autistic person's individual and 
different ways of processing and experiencing grief. Okay, here are some practical strategies that you can use to navigate grief as an autistic person. Let's start off with understanding and identifying emotions. Find, provide, seek out, use the tools you well know of to help you in identifying emotions. Use those tools, those resources, the things that you know work for you to identify the emotions you are experiencing. It's the identifying and processing of emotions that autistic people can struggle with. It's not about not feeling them, it's about working out what they are. So it doesn't matter if it's charts, visual aids, explanations, resources, tools, whatever. Use what works to recognize and express the feelings and emotions you are going through. Another strategy is creating predictable routines. Establishing or fiercely maintaining your routines and schedules can be critical for an autistic person going through the grief process. Doing so provides you with a sense of stability, familiarity, did I say that right? Oh, it's the closest I'm gonna get. And can help autistic people feel more secure and grounded. Another strategy for autistic people to use in navigating grief is using visual supports. And when I say visual supports, I mean things like the things you probably already know about, social stories, visual schedules, or even visual prompts to provide you with concrete, black and white, logical explanations and guidance on how you, an autistic person, can cope with grief. If the support's in a more understandable way for an autistic person, clearly it's going to be more effective. The next strategy is around sensory regulation. During grief, it's really important that you recognize and accommodate your sensory sensitivities. How? Pretty simple, by creating or maintaining your sensory friendly spaces, your sensory friendly environments. You may feel like you need sensory tools more now than ever. Use them, embrace that. And honestly, this is a powerful one. Just allow yourself more or regular breaks for sensory regulation. Allowing yourself regular breaks to manage your sensory regulation will help you in your process of experiencing grief. By the way, don't deny yourself sensory comforts, sensory regulation tools and comforts that you know work for you. Don't deny them. Maybe it's through judgment of others. Oh, who cares? Whatever. What works for you? Is it a nice big warm hug in a weighted blanket? Do that. Is it other weighted items? Is it comforting scents? You know, like smells. It's really important that you maintain your self-regulation and manage the sensory sensitivities you may experience, which can be heightened during periods of grief. Another practical strategy to help you navigate grief as an autistic person is use your preferred form of communication. And for those with autistic people in their life, it's important for you to validate this, to support this, to encourage the autistic person in your life to use their preferred form of communication during the grief process. It might be writing, drawing, using assisted technology, whatever it is, allow that, enable that, encourage that. This is really key because autistic people, not all, but some autistic people may experience difficulties with verbal communication during periods of grief. This strategy is super key. Provide ample time for processing. Autistic people like me may need, I definitely do, need extra time in processing things, in adjusting to changes. So it's critical to allow yourself or the autistic person in your life ample time for processing emotions and thoughts and whatever else comes up related to the grief they are experiencing. Another practical strategy to help an autistic person in your life navigate grief is provide concrete explanations. Provide them clear, concrete explanations about grief, about the emotions that may come up, about the physical and emotional changes that may occur, they may experience. This will hopefully help the autistic person in your life understand the process in a more concrete and tangible way. The next strategy, is special interests. During grief, please don't put them on the back burner. Recognize and incorporate your special interests, your passions into a coping mechanism 
for your grief. Personally, as an autistic person, I find engaging in my passions, my special interests, is comforting, is regulating, is peaceful. Encouraging self-care is also really important during grief for an autistic person. Apply self-care strategies. Try to practice good sleep hygiene. And I know how hard sleep can be for autistic people, but the sleep hygiene I'm talking about is consistency of when you're gonna go to bed, when you're gonna wake up, these types of things. Maintain a healthy diet, that's part of self-care. And do your best to support the autistic person in your life to maintain or raise their level of well-being. Another practical strategy autistic people can use to navigate grief is to use or provide social scripts. Why? Well, there's difficult conversations. There's, well, frankly, there's difficult interactions, conversations, experiences related around the loss of someone, right? Or the loss of something around grief. Okay, so how about you either seek for yourself or if you have an autistic person in your life, provide them with social scripts to navigate those tricky and odd and weird and icky and uncomfortable and unknown conversations and interactions and experiences. The hope is not only will it provide a level of preparation, but it also provides processing time and an opportunity to actually convey your thoughts, feelings, and emotions. Encourage creative expression. Another great practical strategy to help you navigate grief as an autistic person. Doesn't matter what your form of expression is, use art, use music, use whatever it is that helps you express yourself creatively. Creative outlets for autistic people can be fantastic for processing grief. Why? Well, autistic people may find comfort in expressing themselves through creative means. The final practical strategy you can use as an autistic person to navigate grief is physical activity. Doesn't have to be hard. I'm just saying incorporate movement. Incorporate any form of physical movement or activity into your day. Go for a walk. Practice relaxation techniques. Whatever works for you. In the doing of a physical activity of some kind, the hope is it will release tension and help you process your emotions. Grief can be a really tough subject to talk about. So hopefully this discussion has helped you in some way. If you or someone you know needs help, please reach out to a healthcare professional for that help. And if you have an idea, a topic you'd like me to cover in an upcoming video, let's see them in the comments below. I really do appreciate your support until my next video. Thank you so much for watching and we'll talk soon.